What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Travi, and today, April 18th, 2022, we got some insane news about the upcoming Chaos Knights Codex from... Warhammer community. So today I wanted to take a moment to just do a redux of all of the current Chaos Knights information that we have. There are a lot of new units and combinations coming out of this new codex, so I want to talk about them a little bit. First off, a couple weeks ago we did see an update, this is on, from the 4th of April, to the Chaos Knights starter box. Well, I guess the big news was that they're getting a starter box, which is pretty freaking cool. It has two War Dogs in it, as well as one of the new Knight Abominants that we've talked about quite a bit over the last couple of months. This was spoiled in Games Workshop's 2022 new model teaser trailer, and at Adepticon earlier this month, we did see it in its fully tentacle glory. Now, the cool stuff about this spoiler in particular are the new unit types that are coming out of it. First off, this new War Dog kit is going to be able to build three varieties, either the War Dog Carnivore, which is the guy with this funny little dog skull. He's just the goodest boy, and he deserves all of the demonic head pads. Interestingly, these new War Dogs are going to be following basically the same tradition that the larger knight chassis have been. We have a double melee weapon version, that being this Carnivore, with a melee plus ranged weapon. Weapon, that being the Stalker, and then we have a dual ranged weapon variety, that being the Brigand. The most interesting thing to see here are going to be the abilities on each of these different units, since specializing your units tends to be more effective in 40k, although if we're able to bring some powerful melee alongside potentially assault weapons, sort of close range fire support, that could potentially help a build like the Stalker. And again, as we've been seeing with more recent data sheets, Games Workshop has been moving away from the model where the only thing differentiating these different units are their weapon loadouts, and we could see each of them have some very unique and special abilities that benefit their particular loadout. More importantly, Importantly, though, we also did see a little bit of a spoiler for the Knight Abominant, specifically that this unit will be a Psyker, which is pretty cool. Its primary ranged weapon on its right arm is a Volkite Combustor, a weapon that may be pretty suited to the upcoming metagame post-April Data Slate release, since with the inclusion of the Armor of Contempt roll, making all of the power-armored armies in the game reduce incoming armor penetration by one, are you having a Volkite profile, which typically comes in at 0 AP, but has the ability to deal mortal wounds on top of its normal damage on wound rolls of 6, is actually going to be a very valuable ability, since the difference between AP 1 and AP 0 is going to be felt a lot less. However, those mortal wounds are always good, regardless of whether or not you're attacking a Custodian Guard, a regular Space Marine that's reducing your AP, or even a Tyranid Monster that has several ways to access Transhuman. Against all of those targets, mortal wounds are going to be pretty effective at punching through those good saving values. In this article, we also see some very cool different build options for the Abominant. Between this image and the box art image, we can see a couple different faceplates available. This one's got these big horns on it, whereas the other guy has more of a classic helmet, and we can see that the birds, the vultures that are on top of its carapace, are not baked in. They're actually optional and can be replaced with these big spiking chainy things, which is pretty sweet, actually. Especially for a unit that's going to be a psyker and is supposed to be sort of mutated by warp energy, having the ability to really customize your own is super awesome. I think this kit, I mean, it looks great. I'm really super excited for it. But the reason that this is such a big deal is this article that came out today on April 18th that's doing the rounds around the 40k community right now. This is talking about new chapter command style upgrades called Favor of the Dark Gods. These are going to be customization abilities that are available for what sounds like a point upgrade to each of your knights. And there's going to be a lot of them. Further down in this article, they talk about how there are going to be specific favors for all of the different knight chassis, up to 15 in total, which means that the level of customization available to the Chaos Knights army is going to be crazy. You have to remember, this is in addition to your heirlooms and warlord traits. So your knights are going to have a lot of options to really be specialized into their specific roles. And if you are specialized well enough, you do get a benefit from that with this new favored ability mechanic. In this way, each Chaos Knight that scores the requisite number of kills, we can see 
for war dogs it's only five models killed for aberrants it's 10 for tyrants that's the big castellan equivalent knights and if you are able to score that many kills and i believe it is going to be models killed you will unlock a second tier of your favor of the dark gods ability and we get some examples in this article as well the blood shield ability is the spiritual successor to the cornate targeting system that the previous chaos knights codex used that allowed its models to ignore invulnerable saves once per game and essentially does a very similar thing removing invulnerable saves both from the targets of the knight's melee attacks and from the knight itself until the end of a fight phase interestingly if you upgrade a knight abominant with this ability, it also loses its Psyker ability. So we just talked about how cool it was that Abominance were Psykers, and the reason that that is important is because this Blood Shield will remove it. That said, you do get plus one weapon skill and plus one attack if you are a favored of Corn. This also says to me that we can expect these Chaos Knights to have invulnerable saves in melee, and I imagine that their Ion Shield's ability will be moving to a flat invulnerable save from what we've seen previously in the 8th edition codex, an invulnerable save only against ranged attacks. That said, some relevant Relics and Warlord traits and things did give the ability to get invulnerable saves over and above the normal invulnerable save versus ranged attacks. Maybe that's what this is referencing, but I have to imagine that if this specifically removes invulnerable saves from the bearer, it's a high likelihood that almost all of the knights in the codex are going to have invulnerable saves in melee. Moving on, we also see the Subjugator Machine Spirit ability, the Slanesh flavored one. I do appreciate that we are referencing Subjugator Titans here. That's a unit I remember being in an Apocalypse supplement, if I remember correctly, as a kid, but that was an old epic chaos knight which was very very strange looking this upgrade that gives you the ability to advance fall back and still fire as normal you can just remain stationary until the end of your shooting phase the favorite ability so if you have scored the requisite number of kills allows you to advance or fall back in charge this ability is going to be a little bit less exciting the ability to fall back in charge is absolutely awesome especially because with the titanic keyword most of the units eligible to be upgraded with this effect are going to be able to fall back and shoot, meaning you can fall back and operate normally, but advancing and charging isn't necessarily going to be that useful since that ability tends to be more effective in the early game. And you're probably going to be waiting until turn two or turn three to actually get the requisite number of kills to unlock that favorite ability. We'll have to see what kinds of knights can be targeted by this. If it is a knight that is good both in melee and shooting, you could potentially see it unlock its ability by shooting early against enemy chaff units and then be able to deliver some powerful melee beta strikes later on with that ability to advance and charge. I have no idea, but it'll be very interesting. And one thing that I think this mechanic makes very cool, and I've talked about these sort of mechanics in the past, is the mini game of being able to donate kills to the knights that you want to unlock the specific abilities of. So if your opponent is giving you small, cheap chaff units that are easy to kill but can give up a lot of individual model kills, you could be incentivized maybe to take less efficient attacks so you can be getting those kills with the knights whose favorite abilities you want to be unlocking. This is something that I like to do in the Tyranid Codex currently using the mod clause of Fire Axe, which levels up as you destroy enemy units with the character who's carrying that relic and really makes you reconsider how you play your turn, since just trying to deal raw damage to your opponent isn't necessarily going to be as effective in the long run as couching your attacks and making sure you're getting those kills with the units that need them. Now, last but certainly not least is going to be this Blessing of the Dark Master favorite ability. This gives you the favor of Bellicorn, the first demon prince himself. This gives you the Pantheon Undivided keyword, which I imagine is going to be an undivided style keyword that we see used moving forward throughout the remainder of this Chaos release. And the effect is absolutely ludicrous. Each time an attack is made against a model, your opponent cannot reroll the hit roll, wound roll, or damage roll. <laughs> For factions that rely on rerolls to take down big targets like knights, this is going to make whoever gets targeted with this absolute phenomenally difficult to take down. And that's even before its favorite ability triggers, which gives it a light Sadath Harlequin style effect, where hit rolls of 1, 2, or 3 always fail, regardless of the abilities that the weapon or model making the attack may have. And importantly to note, you cannot reroll those hit rolls against this guy, meaning that even if you're going in with a big smash character who's hitting on 2s, rerolling with their own targeted ability, all of those turn off. It's only hitting on 4s. And against a knight, it's probably only wounding on 4s 
fours or threes with no rerolls anyway, meaning that your ability to kill this guy, even with units that are particularly adept at crushing through that heavy armor, is going to be pretty limited. Now, obviously, that is a favorite ability, so you do have to be accruing kills over the course of the game in order to unlock it, but if it's on a knight with powerful ranged attacks who could potentially be starting to accrue those kills from the first turn of the game, this could unlock relatively quickly and make that guy able to sit in the back of the deployment zone and just lay waste to the opponent's army while taking essentially no damage back. Now, what makes this especially cool is the spoiling of this fallen hero ability. This gives you access to a super heavy auxiliary detachment, including a single Dreadblade unit. Dreadblades, at least in the current incarnation of the Chaos Knights Codex, are the knights that have access to Iconoclast or Infernal Pacts and Damnations, giving them the ability to suffer drawbacks in order for some very powerful abilities. So if your Super Heavy Auxiliary includes only a Dreadblade unit, they get the Agent of Chaos keyword. This is similar to Agent of the Imperium and allows them to be included in an army without breaking your faction abilities. Things like Contagions of Nurgle, Kabbalistic Rituals, as explained, in the ability. Now, a little bit of a grain of salt here, obviously. This rule is more of a leak, less of a concrete spoiler from Warhammer Community itself, but seems pretty likely and definitely points us in the direction of seeing the future Chaos releases coming later in 2022, theoretically the year of Chaos, as recreating this kind of Chaos super faction dynamic that we've had since 8th edition, where Chaos is less of a collection of individual factions that maybe can be played together and more of a an overarching superstructure of different factions that are meant to complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. We see that being played already right now with units like Chaos Demons, Demon Princes being brought alongside Demon Engines out of codexes like Death Guard to give them act those very powerful Death Guard profiles while getting the support effects out of Chaos Demons. And hopefully we see abilities like this Agent of Chaos rule being moved forward throughout the remainder of these Chaos Codexes as they come out. Now all this news is in addition to the knight weapon profiles that we saw spoiled last week a lot of updated profiles really big glow ups for these big knight super heavy weapons but overall i'm so excited for these updated knight profiles and especially these favorite of um and especially these favorite abilities because like i said before that mini game of killing your opponent's units with the correct knights and at the correct time and making sure that your knights can accrue enough damage over the course of the game to unlock their favorite abilities is super awesome and i think just adds more excitement to the game not to mention that it is a wildly flavorful full ability. Overall, the Chaos Knights release is looking like it's going to come out swinging. I'm so excited for it. There's a lot of beautiful models and super cool mechanics being released with this codex. So let me know down in the comments how excited about it you are. That's all I have to say today about these Chaos Knights. Big thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Thanks as well for everyone who supports the channel. As always, YouTube channel members, Twitch subscribers, patrons that you can join at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. All those people are super cool and beautiful, and I love them a lot. As always, remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.